The hawkfish is a brightly colored, orange-spotted coral reef-dwelling fish with an incredible reproductive talent. Hawkfish may begin their lives as females, but when there are too many female hawkfish in their habitat, they have the ability to turn into males of the same species. This allows the new male hawkfish to take on some of the reproductive burden, allowing the females more mating options. Not only can the hawkfish change its sex, it can also change it back. A hawkfish that has turned male can revert back to female if the population makeup changes and more females are needed. This incredible talent is not limited to hawkfish either. Gender bending is prevalent throughout the animal kingdom. Frogs, bearded dragons, clownfish, and many other animals have the ability to change sex if the situation calls for it. You might be sitting at home wondering, what's with all the animal talk? I came here for an SCP video, not a biology lesson. Well, trust us, we're getting there. While it's simple for many other animals, human beings have a great deal more difficulty changing their sex and gender characteristics. It can require surgery and years of hormone replacement therapy to get the kind of results a clownfish gets overnight. Unless, of course, a human gets their hands on SCP-113. SCP-113 is a small polished red stone resembling a piece of jasper. When studied closely, in spite of its resemblance, it was found to not be jasper or any other identifiable type of rock. When placed against the flesh of a living thing with sex chromosomes, the organism's gender and sex-associated physical characteristics are changed in some way. These effects were first tested on humans with an unnamed D-class. The D-class was placed in a sterile examination room and hooked up to a variety of sensors and equipment designed to monitor their biological state, health, and any other changes to their body that might take place. First, the D-class was instructed to open their hand and close the stone in their fist. This contact between their skin and SCP-113 kick-started the first stage of the transformation process. Stage 1 lasted approximately 0.2 seconds, as the stone bonded with the cells it was touching, causing a chemical change and leaving a small amount of tissue damage comparable to a mild burn. As soon as this process began, the D-Class could not remove the stone from their hand. Unsettled, they attempted to shake the stone loose from their skin, but to no avail. It was firmly attached to the skin and would not be removed until the process was complete. The second stage of transformation followed, lasting approximately 20 seconds. The D-Class reported feeling nauseous and promptly vomited on the floor of the exam room. Next, they reported a stinging sensation throughout their body, like being pricked with tiny needles all over. These sensations have been attributed to a low-level electromagnetic wave released by SCP-113 during this phase, which was picked up by one of the monitors. After the nausea passed, the scientists observing the D-Class's monitors began taking furious notes, shocked at what was occurring. Though the modality of it was unclear, the subject's cellular makeup was beginning to change. Some of their cells were registering as non-human, and others were registering as human stem cells. At this point, the D-Class began to scream in agony. All of the sensory nerves in their body were stimulated at once, and their brain activity was overwhelming at a level similar to a seizure. Finally, once the screaming stopped and the D-Class had gone still, the rock came loose from their hand and clattered to the floor. After this, a full physical was performed, and the D-Class was determined to have undergone dramatic physical changes. All of their primary and secondary sexual characteristics altered permanently. While SCP-113's effect on humans with binary gender identities, male and female, have been studied, it is still difficult to determine the sort of impact that the stone might have on someone with a non-binary gender identity, or if the stone in fact takes gender identity into account at all. There is some evidence that the stone is impacted by gender identity, though this is not always consistent. While SCP-113 alters the physiology of the test subject, it has no impact on the mind. The subject's gender identity remains the same before and after testing with the stone. In the case of one intersex individual who was exposed to the stone, their secondary and primary sex characteristics change to those that would be more affirming to the individual's gender identity. However, as this is still very inconsistent and unpredictable, not to mention possibly accompanied by side effects that have not been determined yet, SCP-113 should not be considered a safe or viable alternative to gender confirmation surgery for transgender individuals who might be seeking it. 
further research is required on the subject. Ordinarily, it is standard scientific practice to test on animals before testing on humans. However, the SCP Foundation isn't exactly known for its standard research practices. After sufficient human trials have been conducted, the Foundation researchers studying SCP-113 decided to test its effects on other non-human organisms. There was a great deal of curiosity about how it might impact various animals, especially those whose sexual dimorphism, or indeed entire relationship to sex and gender, is fundamentally different from that of humans. With standard cats, rats, and dogs, the impact was essentially the same as that on humans. First, the stone binds to the skin. Then it emits an electromagnetic wave causing some nausea and vomiting. Next, the sensory nerves are stimulated for 20 seconds as the cells become altered. Finally, the stone falls away from the skin and the transformation has been completed. Interesting at first, but after the 20th rat, it starts to become a little mundane. However, exposure of certain other species to SCP-113 resulted in some unusual effects. When a number of Komodo dragons were exposed to SCP-113, their chromosomes change from ZWZZ to WW, resulting in the eventual deaths of the reptiles. When nematodes, which are either male or hermaphroditic, were exposed, no males were produced during the experiment. Male nematodes changed and became hermaphroditic, and the hermaphroditic specimens were completely unaffected as far as the researchers could tell. Earthworms that were exposed to the stone were not transformed at all, and the transformation process stopped during stage 2 every single time. Several of the previously mentioned animals were used as test subjects as well, in order to determine what effect the stone would have on a creature that already naturally changes its sex characteristics. Clownfish exposed to the stone experienced no change to their sex characteristics, but bizarrely did change color from white and orange to a vivid blue. No adverse effects were identified. Bearded dragons exposed to SCP-113 spontaneously began to lay eggs, which were immediately retrieved and placed into incubators for observation. Once hatched, the eggs contained ordinary baby bearded dragons that seemed to have no altered physiology or residual effects from the stone. The hawkfish exposed to the stone simply transformed the same way they would in the wild, from female to male, just at a faster rate than they would under natural circumstances. The rest of the animals tested had the same result as the earthworm. The stone simply disengaged from the test subject during stage 2 of the transformation, as if it was giving up. As SCP-113 is classified as safe and only impacts those who deliberately come into physical contact with it, its containment procedures are relatively simple. The stone is kept in standard storage at Site-23 and may be handled with laboratory gloves. No living being is permitted to be exposed to SCP-113 unless it has been officially approved. If exposed to SCP-113, personnel must be kept under medical observation for seven days in order to study its impact and make sure no unexpected adverse effects are present. After conducting a variety of animal trials, the research team assigned to SCP-113 became curious yet again about its impact on human test subjects. Not on new subjects, but those that had already been transformed by SCP-113 in one way or another. They wanted to determine what would happen to someone who was re-exposed to the stone. Would it reverse its own effects, essentially turning them back to the person they were before the experiment? Would it transform them further? Would it harm them? In an attempt to find out, several of the original D-Class personnel used in 113's human trials were brought back for another round of experimentation, as well as a new D-Class to test the effects of immediate re-exposure. First, the D-Class who had never been exposed to SCP-113 had the stone placed on his bare arm. Immediately, it attached itself to him and the transformation began. After the transformation was complete and the rock detached from his arm, the attending scientists waited a duration of 60 seconds before reattaching it. In order to avoid excessive tissue damage, the stone was placed on his other arm for a second trial. Almost immediately, the subject began to cry out in immense pain, writhing on the exam table and begging for the stone to be removed. Of course, at this point, it had already bound to his cells and could not be taken off. During stage 2, his liver began to swell and he began to enter the early phases of kidney failure. By the time stage 4 was complete and the stone could be removed, the subject had passed out from the pain. An immediate physical examination determined that the subject had significant damage to his liver and kidneys, 
as well as a loss of bone density and massive tissue damage on the arm where the stone had been placed. Finally, his genitals appeared to have completely disappeared, leaving a smooth surface behind on the pubic area, like that of a doll. The subject died a few hours later from organ failure and internal bleeding. The rest of the D-classes were understandably reluctant to be re-exposed to the stone, but unfortunately for them, and luckily for the Foundation, they didn't have much of a choice. Well, that's brutal. Security locked the door to the examination room and the experimentation proceeded as planned. Re-exposure after a significant amount of time had passed had a much higher success rate than immediate re-exposure and the rest of the test subjects survived their second transformation at the hands of SCP-113. However, it did not return them to the state they were in before their first exposure to the stone. Some of them experienced no physical changes at all, save for a small amount of tissue damage where the stone touched their skin. Others experienced physical changes that had nothing to do with their sex characteristics. One subject's eyes changed color from green to purple, while another subject suffering from male pattern baldness emerged from the experiment with a full head of hair. Some of the changes were more dramatic. One subject ended up with feathers sprouting all over the surface of her skin. Another lost all of his teeth. One particularly odd test subject seemed completely ordinary and unchanged, until his physical examination. During the exam, it was discovered that all of his internal organs had changed places inside of his body. Their configuration turned completely upside down. He seemed otherwise unharmed and able to function as normal, and still works at the Foundation to this day. Even when exposure is spaced out, the more times a person comes into contact with SCP-113, the stranger the effects get. The details have been expunged from the official Foundation file, but there are rumors that one test subject after their fifth exposure to SCP-113 transformed into something completely inhuman and possibly deadly. Like I said, the details have been removed from the file, but word gets around, especially words like claws and acid tentacles. Those could just be rumors, but who knows? Biology is full of mysteries, and there is still so much we do not understand about the natural world and the ways in which living things can transform for better or for much worse. Perhaps some mysteries, especially the mystery of SCP-113, are better left alone. Now go check out SCP-004, 12 Rusty Keys and the Door, and SCP-500 Panacea for more unusual object SCPs.